All right, welcome back. So we're we're come back after the holidays. It's been a long time since, well, not maybe not long, a couple months since we we connected and got some content put out there. We took a little break over the holidays to enjoy. Kylie and I actually both started new jobs, as you probably read about last week, and so we've taken some time to adjust to those roles. And now we're back with a bunch more content. So we reconnected over uh, the beginning of the year and kind of put together a plan of of content that we want to roll out. And we realized as we were talking through that, that we haven't spent a whole lot of time in the actual application. We've talked about getting data in. We've talked about different ways like the forms processing and the web form and the flow and Power Automate and all that great stuff. But we haven't spent a lot of time in the solution. And so while we while we were doing a lot of that previous work, what we did was build it out at a base, sort of a basic way, just to give us the fields and content we needed. But now we're going to focus the next probably handful of videos, I guess, um, really diving into the solution itself, doing some cleanup, right? When you open the system up out of the box, sometimes they include stuff that you don't really want and or need. And so we're going to we're going to start today by doing a little bit of that cleanup, adding in some custom fields on some views that we need and also doing some tidy up so that all of our views are going to look the same. So that's just the start. We've got a whole slate of content lined up that we're going to record over the next little while and we'll be re re rolling stuff out. So we're excited that you're back with us and uh, and hope that you learn something through this journey with us. Yeah, excellent. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. So as Malcolm said, here is our Power Baseball League app that we built last season in the fall, right? And you can see just our default active contacts view. It contains these fields that we don't need. So that's something that we're going to update. And we also see that we have all of the system views that we don't necessarily need all of those, right? So we're going to clean both of those up right now. So let's go over to Power Apps. I'm already within our solution that we created previously and let's go ahead and edit our model driven app so we can edit the views that we're seeing there right so let's go to edit and we're talking about contacts right now so i can go to yep. forms views right now i have all but i don't want all so let's see which ones do we not want to check off malcolm so we definitely don't want those ones that talk about like deals that were won or campaign activities in the last three months. That one those. we may do down the road, but right now we can remove it. So let's right. let's select everything except there's there's basically four we don't want. Perfect. So we don't want do we want to include my connections? No, that's one of the ones I don't think we need. Perfect. But we might want to include some of these. Um, I guess we will include our contact association view. We might need that in our lookup view. Yeah. Right, perfect. So yep, let's save good. and publish this guy. And then we're going to jump back in and edit some of those views. Yeah, so now we're cleaning up that clutter so that when we open up that views toggle, if you will, or the view selector, yeah. that we don't, we're not seeing a bunch of stuff we don't need, which is a, a thing, you know, especially if you're coming out of the box and you're rolling out, this is an exercise you're going to want to go through with probably all your tables and make sure that you get rid of anything, uh, particularly the out of the box ones, right? Those dataverse stuff, they, they're making some assumptions on how you're using the platform and, and things that you want, which is super helpful. But um, if you don't need them, you don't need to see them. And your users, especially, they don't, they, you're already going to hear things like, oh, there's so many buttons and I don't know what everything does. Let's, let's try and remove as much of that clutter as you possibly can. Yeah, remember users don't know what they're doing and they're going to ask questions about anything. So you want to give them a straight, easy path to follow. Yeah. So let's update this view like we talked about. We're going to go to contact all within the solution. I'm going to choose views and I'm going to choose the active contacts view for now. You'll notice this new, if you are from kind of classic CRM days, right? This new view editor is so beautiful and it's nice that mm -hmm. it shows you your data as we are working on it, right? Which is really helpful. So we're first gonna take our column name here and we're gonna remove company name. We don't need that. And we're gonna remove our business phone. <clears throat> and then we have a few ways to add new columns. We can view, uh, click here to add them or we can search so I'm going to search for our birthday. That's something we know we want. And I'm just going to pull it right in here. Beautiful. 
I also like, you know, we can scroll and just choose the columns. But something I really like is I can also mm -hmm. just search this just to see custom fields. So we know we only have a few custom fields, but we know we probably need them. So let me drag them in here. We want age and we want our contact type for sure. Let's put that right at the front here. And we can also adjust to better fit our data. How does that look, Malcolm? That looks good. One thing I've noticed with the adjustment that you just did um, in, in some examples, and this may be a little glitch, if you will, or thing that they're going to tweak, but it doesn't, I found that it doesn't always perfectly reflect what you see here. So I've had a few where you're seeing contact type and you see that full header written there. But once you publish and you open it up, you might find that it actually just, you see contact TY. And so you actually, you might have to go a little more, more a little more wide, a little wider, um, or, or things like that. I don't know for sure. And again, that might be something that they may make it a true reflection. So what you see here is exactly what you see in the app. That's just something I've noticed that you might, don't, don't be alarmed or, or concerned if you see it. It's just a quick, quick tweak in the back. For sure, some extra yeah. extra space never hurts on those. And keep in mind, all your forms and views and everything is going to be impacted by your uh, by the size of your screen, resolution, all of that fun stuff. So there's many valid cases where what you're Absolutely. seeing and what the user seeing might not be exact. But yeah, that great point. You just make sure you are keeping your extra space, and yeah. all looks good. Also, we'll point out the sort and filter are right here on the right-hand side if you need to make updates to those. In this case, we're just going to leave those as is. All right, let's save, and we're going to publish this guy. Now, something that's really cool within um, the XRM toolbox is the view layout replicator, and so that allows mm -hmm. us to take this layout that we've built and push it to the other views, right? Because within... Um, within our contact entity, we have this whole list of views and probably what we just did on active contacts is the data we want to see on all of those views. And in the past, you might have gone to each one, updated it manually, hoped you got the columns the right width, you know, going back and forth, and that's just no fun. So instead, we're going to encourage you to use this tool. So I'm just going to launch the XRM toolbox. Um, let's just reload our contact. And what, what I can do is I'm going to choose that active contacts view as my source view. So you'll see this has the updates I just made with the width of those columns. Also for our classic um, Dynamics users, notice these widths. These aren't the widths we're used to seeing, right? Mm -hmm. Where you had to choose 50, 25, 100, 150, or whatever. Now, because I can kind of choose with the data, I can get these weird column widths, which I think is pretty cool, but I'm sure there are some OCD people who are not as big fans, but that's a problem for later. Uh, you also notice I'm choosing our active contacts view, but we also have user views showing up here. So this is just a personal view I created prior to this call. And that could be something, say I have a power user who's like, this is how the business needs to see data and they're very detail oriented. They could build out that view for you and then you could copy it back to your system views if you wanted to. But we're going to use our active contacts and then we're going to pass all of the, we're going to update all of our other views, right? So let's select all these guys. And the other, the really important one I want you to pay attention to here is our quick find view too, because you also want to make sure when you're searching that you, uh, when you search, you want the same columns to show up. You don't want that, uh, you don't want searching to change the columns that you're seeing, right? So let's cl click Save Views. Oh, what did I do? I think one of them is a um, wrong. I think that that there though is a common. I think that's just saying, hey, you can't. There's certain certain views you can't pick. Um, yeah, it's. I mean, saying we can update, we can update the v lookup view, but we might not want to. I think in this case we do want to. I think we're okay there. So let's go ahead and click yes. All right, so it's going to make the updates to everything. So just to touch on what Kylie said, this where this really saves time, and I know I've spent tons of time doing this before, take it 
write, write down all the columns that you think you want um, and, and their sizes, right? I've been caught in scenarios where I, was, I looked at a view and I was like, oh, it's only four columns. I'll remember what they are. And then you get over and you open it. And by the time it loads and you go through and, and you realize you don't remember. And so you have to bounce back and forth. Or so then you, you uh, evolve a little bit. You take a screenshot, which is great, but you didn't capture the, the, the widths of all the columns and you don't remember if it was 50 or 75. And maybe you can't tell. So just little things. This this eliminates all of that messing around and back and forth. It saves quite literally. This this could save you a ridiculous amount of time in the long run because so much time over the course of a whole year, right? All the little adjustments you make and making sure all the reviews are the same. It also, you know, we talk a lot about user experience. This is a huge win for user experience because it's now bringing consistency. Everything they look at is going to look and feel exactly the same. And that's one thing I've heard countless times is people go in and they like, well, I look at this view. But I had to create my own view and it had this column because I wanted it here instead of there. That this you still you still might run into that because you you know everybody's different, they have their own preferences. But if you can instill at least that foundational base of of structure for all of the views, that should eliminate some of that because everybody and then you can make it a whole team discussion. Like, hey, somebody wants to move this one over here to here, or what do you what does everybody think? And come up with a process to do that. So. Yeah, and good, I and I think tool. that's what's super cool about advanced find, right? So we can create something that works for 90% of the business. And then that extra 10% can still create their own views and they can still make those views their default views and they can do whatever they like and still get that data. Cool. So as you were talking, I did click publish and we pushed out that update. So you'll see, let's see, let's look at our active contacts list. You'll notice this list is much shorter and those other views that we had selected um, to no longer be in the app are gone. Look at our beautiful new columns that we created and let's jump to one of these other views, my active contacts, and look, we have all the same views, all the same columns, all contacts, all the same width. How beautiful. And I see it on my end too. So I've got it pulled up on my screen and uh, you refreshed it. I, or you published, I refreshed, pardon me, a couple times and I now see all the columns and all the views are outfitted the exact same way. So beautiful. Perfect. Job done. <laughs> so and less than you, you 10 can, minutes and we made this great uh, update to user experience and we've been able to update our columns and make it look much better in searching. So Thank you everyone for joining us and we hope you see us next time. Next time we're going to talk about transferring views between environments and some other fun stuff. So see you then. Yeah, what all are we digging in? Oh, sorry. You, you said we'll see you then, but I wanted to just touch on because it was one thing that we were going to talk about. Uh, oh, the more complex views. That was the piece that I wanted to call out. So if you're if you're seeing this change and you're like, oh, that's pretty straightforward, next time we're going to dive into some of those more complex views where we might want to bring in fields from other entities and or tables, sorry, and uh, and have that in. So that's kind of a, a teaser of that because that's something I've seen a lot of users struggle with. Like, I don't know where this data is and where to get it. So we'll talk about some tips around that next time. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.